Welcome to Jerry's Fish Room. All right, guys. Welcome back to Jerry's Fish Room. Thank you so much for joining me. I am so glad that you all are here and have supported my channel. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, it's been a couple weeks, uh, two, three weeks since I put a video out. Um, you know, again, I told you, you know, I'm trying to watch out for allowing the channel to become uh, predominantly the thing for me in this hobby. Um, I want my fish uh, passion to drive this hobby. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to hit and miss on these videos. I'm going to try to be somewhat consistent. But uh, with that being said, I uh, really felt like this was the week to, to do a video. I've been kind of um, absolutely in a fish funk. Yeah, that's the title of the video. Um, fish funk is kind of just, I don't know other, any other way to describe it. Uh, but I wanted to just kind of share, and that's what this channel is all about, is to share some of the things that uh, we as uh, those that are Aquarius or those that are keeping fish in this hobby, um, sometimes we experience, whether we have a YouTube channel or not, um, we get into these funks sometimes in our hobbies. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And uh, so this is going to be twofold to share a little bit about where I'm at, um, what has kind of been some of my uh, struggles, and then also basically reaching out to you guys and ask for some help. And we'll talk about that in the second part of this video. But first of all, I want to just kind of share with you some of what uh, has been going on. So naturally, you guys know, I've been on a high. Uh, I got my 180-gallon tank from Glass Cages. I've got it set up. You've seen that video. I will be following it up with a video just to go over all of the intricate pieces and parts that keep that aquarium running from the lights to the filters to the substrate and, and the fish themselves. Uh, but uh, that'll be in the near future. Uh, so that's been kind of a high moment for me. But like anything else, once you get it and everything is set up, the excitement is there for a few weeks, uh, things kind of just mellow out and you enjoy your aquarium, which is where I'm at with that tank. Um, I have uh, some passion to put a few more fish in that tank, uh, going through a little bit of, uh, um, I don't know, uh, kind of a hierarchy thing right now within the tank. Um, I've got the uh, Malawi Trout and the uh, Starry Night kind of battling for position in the tank. Um, I also know that maybe I could use a few more fish in there, try to maybe quiet some things down. Uh, nobody's gotten damaged or hurt, but you know, the excitement of seeing that tank, of watching that tank, it's still there. The passion is still there. I love the tank. Um, again, it's just probably one of my, it is my best tank that I have. Uh, but you know after a while things just kind of settle down with those things and you just peacefully relax and enjoy those those tanks uh, but in the meantime I've been having some craziness going on with some other fish uh, you guys have been in tune with some of it you know I had the uh, massive die-off of the electric blue Acara uh, fry uh, for no reason whatsoever uh, if you followed me for any length of time, you know I started with about a dozen discus. Um, I'm now down to six discus and uh, have struggled with them always. Uh, these are the stinker discus that I bought. Uh, struggled with them and their size um, and uh, you know just some health issues and some things that probably as a fish keeper I learned as I went. Um, you know, had. Um, you know just some some pretty significant die off which you know in turn discus are not cheap so you know it was a pretty significant investment that uh, kind of got hammered on uh, this week in fact um, I was at seven when I started the week and lo and behold out of the blue for no reason whatsoever the fish was eating fine everything was great the night before uh, I wake up on uh, Friday morning right after Thanksgiving and bam found a fish uh, one of my discus um, floating in the bottom uh, you know not doing well so got pre prepped the tank to quarantine them but um, literally by the time I got the quarantine tank set up in a half an hour or so uh, that fish had expired and just frustrating just absolutely frustrating and uh, um, you know I, I know it's not Discus are not that hard. They're a lot more finicky for sure, um, but who knows? I don't know. It's been crazy 
Um, you know, again, just the loss of the Acara, the loss of the discus, and I'm sitting in front of this tank because this tank here has been a difficult problem for me as well. Um, I have a passion that I wanted to get into uh, in the community side of things with trying to get angels going. Uh, and then uh, I started with about a dozen angels, smaller, had every anticipation of moving angelfish as needed because uh, I do know that once they start to get mature age and they start pairing off, um, they will um, you know, show some aggression and some domination to kind of claim their territory. So I was prepared in dealing with that, was going to be able to move them. Um, I got a batch of fry, uh, actually um, eggs laid by two of them, and um, just went ahead and pulled them. And uh, they turned into wigglers, but didn't last more than two days. Uh, so I just chalked it up to experience, we'll, you know, to, to keep working on it. Um, but then the next day or two after that, one of that mating pair um, found her found it floating. I don't know if it was the male or the female. Uh, frustrating, you know. I've lost about four or five angelfish before that for no reason. It was just angels in here. Uh, didn't sense any domination or any uh, picking on one another. Um, there were a couple times I did see some fish isolated, but they didn't stay isolated. Uh, but anyways, with that being said, uh, lost one of the breeding pair that had paired off, and uh, uh, lo and behold, uh, within a short amount of time, I lost another fish, then another fish, and ultimately I've lost uh, half of the angels that I started with. So I've got six now. Um, I noticed again some separation that was going on, so I did pull out the other four angels. They're a little bit smaller. And I'm left with a platinum blue in here and a koi that have mated and paired off and laid eggs. Uh, didn't get any luck out of that uh, batch, but uh, so they're in here. Um, and uh, that's kind of where I'm at with the angelfish. Uh, I just often think, you know, with, with some of the losses that I've had, especially the angelfish, I mean, they're not that hard to keep. Um, but I just don't understand. You know, I think only one case I could tell that a fish had, may have had bloat. But in every other situation, I don't, I don't see. There's no ick, no nothing. Uh, just all of a sudden, they're done. They've expired, and so it just created a bit of frustration. Um, and then on top of that, um, my local fish store, a good friend of mine, James Community Aquatics, uh, about three weeks ago, um, made me aware that uh, because of the economy and the way things are going, um, and just, uh, just the craziness of. Um, the world right now and, and trying to keep a business going uh, he's shutting down his local fish store and I had so many plans to work with him uh, from breeding guppies to, to, to selling him to breeding these angel fish um, you know and, and just to get into some of the the fish um, you know that he sells because again his community aquatics he focuses mainly on uh, community fish and so, um, with all that being said, that phone call, uh, getting it from him a couple weeks back, um, just really sad for him, but it's, it hurts the hobby. It, it hurts those of us that are uh, trying to promote the hobby. It hurts those of us that really enjoy the hobby. Um, you know, and when you have some, some plans, one of the things has always been for me is a breeding. Wanted to try my hand at it. Um, not to make a living at it, but as just to enjoy that part of the hobby, you know, maybe offset some of the costs because if you're in this hobby, you know, there's some expense that's tied to it. And uh, part of my funk right now is is I've spent a lot of money, and uh, I uh, am just trying to take a break um, because you know, just a lot of money when you lose fish, and it's very frustrating. And you know you really don't know what direction to go in, and that's kind of where the second half of this video comes into play. Um, I've got a couple of uh, projects planned, um, but again, I really don't know what I'm going to do with them. Uh, one of the things I did get was I got uh, a 12-gallon long nano tank, and I've got a six-gallon long nano tank that are they're sitting up on top of this shelf uh, of this stand here. Um, then I got to do something with or I'm going to do something. I also have a 28 gallon uh, acrylic that's sitting in the uh, garage right now that I got from Glass Cages. 
um, that I want to do something with it. But at the same time, I'm like, man, I've spent so much money on fish here as of late and have had just a run of bad luck. Um, you know, I mean, you go to my African tank, I don't have a single problem. You go to my South American tank, which is over here, you have no issues whatsoever. I go to the simplest fish that it seems like to keep, and I have issues. And I mean, I know that's just part of the hobby, and uh, so that's kind of where my funk is. So with that being said, I really have been struggling with trying to get back a little bit re-engaged with some of these projects, and one of those projects now has become this tank behind me. This is where the two angel fish live. For now, I've thrown in a fistful of guppies, although I have to give Aquafunk a shout out, I uh, was watching one of his videos about the best and worst fish to keep with angels and of course he put guppies on as one of the worst I guess probably because of the, sometimes the aggression um, so these guys will be getting rehomed I'm sure but the reality of it is I need to do something with this tank as you know angels are beautiful they're wonderful fish I absolutely love them uh, I, like I said, I have a platinum blue and a koi that are in this tank. They'll be the centerpiece fish for this tank. But I really don't know what I want to put in them. Uh, I don't know what I want to do. I need to get some dither fish going in there. like to see some shoaling or schooling fish. Um, thinking about quarries for sure as a cleanup crew. Um, you know, may throw a couple more plants in here. But uh, that's where I'm reaching out to you guys. I'm part of the problem with this fish funk that I'm in is I really don't know what I want to do and uh, kind of by not knowing and having a plan or or starting to think about uh, what direction I want to go in uh, because again I'm just frustrated sometimes with the hobby um, not to the point that I'll ever get out of it not to the point that I'm gonna do a whole lot of changing as far as that but to some degree I just really don't know where to spend my money what I want to put in here um, and I got a couple projects like that and we may be talking about some of the additional projects in the future but for now uh, the second half of this video guys that's what I wanted to shout out to you guys is I need help uh, help me get out of the funk get me excited again uh, give me some ideas of what I can do with this tank um, you know give me some places to go if you got um, you know certain types of fish that you like um, that maybe you buy online from someplace uh, love to hear your ideas. Uh, you know, I'm going to be reaching out to my good, good friend Dan Connor with Consolidated Fish Farms, uh, especially once I start getting some ideas from you guys uh, to reach out to him to find uh, maybe some of this fish that he may keep. Uh, you know, and that's always part of the, uh, I guess it's a blessing but a curse. Uh, not having the local fish store, uh, quite frankly, gets frustrating because, you know, you don't have that place that you can just on a Sunday or a Saturday afternoon uh, just pick up, go chill out, go hot talk fish uh, with uh, your friends and uh, you know go get some good fish from your local fish guy and you know and there are some other stores that are around um, I visited a couple of them not overly enthused by what I've seen um, I've got one more that I'm going to check out uh, and, and see how that goes. Uh, my good friend Brandon, Blind Fish Keeper, goes there. Uh, but, you know, I think I'm probably going to be like a lot of you guys are uh, that don't have the local fish stores around, and I'm going to have to be doing some online shopping. Uh, so let me know where you get your fish from. Give me some ideas for this angel fish tank. That's the only thing that's going to stay true to this tank is it's going to be an angel fish tank centerpiece tank. I'm going to keep the platinum blue and I'm going to keep the koi in there. Um, I've got a, uh, a green slate hanging off of this uh, tank that uh, you know the angels can use to breed so I'm not worried about putting fish in there and then have the eggs go away. Um, not even sure to be honest with you if I'm going to raise them. Uh, again without digging into having to go to Aquabit or something like that and try to sell fish I'm not sure I really want to do that. Uh, <clears throat> until I get maybe in touch with another fish store or something that may take them off my hands you know I really don't have any place to go with them so um, I may raise them up I may may not I don't know but it's neither here nor there uh, I just got to get out of this fish funk and I need your help doing it guys and so I appreciate all that you guys have done supporting this channel um, 
you know, shout out to Ben Ochart, who's been constantly there, uh, you know, giving me advice, and we've been talking. Uh, just reached out to Aquafunk, by the way. Shout out, go check out his channel. Um, he, uh, you know, I know him from watching him as he's connected with uh, the Biz, uh, Fishy Biz, and uh, did not realize until I was watching one of his videos, he is actually. Floridian as well. He lives here in Central Florida area. Did not know that. Uh, reached out to him, touched base. He lives not far, maybe an hour and a half away from me. So maybe on the future, we uh, maybe we can hook up. But uh, you know, again, he's a big angelfish guy. So I'm definitely going to be watching a ton of his videos because he's an angelfish guy as well. Uh, and I really, really want to uh, learn more about these guys because I do love the angelfish. I know it can't be that hard, and I'm s hoping that it's not anything I'm doing. But if it is, I want to find out what it is and get it corrected because I absolutely love the angelfish. So, guys, that's all I got this week. I wanted to give you guys a shout out and just again say thank you. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe. Let YouTube know there's some good stuff going on. Uh, give me some likes on the video. Also, if you're looking for some fish, link in the description. Consolidated Fish Farms, he's my channel sponsor. Uh, great pricing, great shipping pricing. Uh, and uh, yeah, it will uh, help the channel a little bit. Uh, but that's not what I'm into it for. Uh, mainly want to give you guys an opportunity to get a discount. So use Jerry's Fish Room at checkout with Consolidated Fish Farms. And also, if you're interested, uh, in getting some merchandise, you know, you want a Jerry's Fish Room t-shirt or a Jerry's Fish Room mug, uh, you know, go check out the Teespring link um, and, uh, and just, just support the channel in any way you can. But I know that just watching the videos for me is enough. So I appreciate it. And guys, until the next time, you know what's coming next. That's right. Even when you're in a fish bunk, keep loving the fish.